Groundhog Day, part 25 or whatever. <laughs> I had some thoughts I could get them down. Uh, by the way, the other night that I did an all-nighter and was rebuilding this, or I don't even remember what I was doing, um, I kept hearing a kind of a boom. It sounded like a distant muffled boom. And I went outside. I heard it three or four times. And I went outside and I looked at the sky and I was wondering if invasion, you know, or I mean, just sounded like kind of like a ex distant explosion. And uh, and then the other thing is like maybe it's the greenhouse, you know. I did have the think thought about pressure, but it was like 7:30 in the morning by the time I got finished up, and I I was just staggered out of here. Well, what had happened was, and I would have noticed if I had if I'd gone out that door anyway. Um, don't remember where I went out, but anyway, the uh, screws were popping off of the north end that's inflated and pulling the uh, wiggle wire channel out of the base of the greenhouse. So I heard about three of those screws pop, and it created a big like an embolism would be the you know uh, uh, in, uh, the plastic blew up, uh, it expanded, and it was stretching because it wasn't tight. So anyway, stressed it terribly. That's going to be fixed today. So anyway, um, some thoughts. Uh, as I was uh, one day, it was winter time. it was snow, and there was a snowstorm going on, and I had this little visitor's camping area where several couple people stayed, you know, camped out when they came to visit. And a friend was there from out of town, out of state, basically out of country, Alaska, another country. When my cousin worked there, he came back to Colorado, and he said, I hate coming back to this communist country. So anyway, um, but anyway, he was visiting, and his name's Dwayne. And I went down three steps to a lower level of their property. There was a retaining wall there. And I handed up a, what we call pallet frames. They're three-foot by four-foot boxes that slip over siding and they're great for making raised beds and everything and I handed one up to him up where he was there was a campfire area and he said Jerry we're going to have so much fun now he never explained what he meant and I never asked him what he meant but I knew that what he meant was when things totally go to hell in a handbasket when the shit hits the fan we're going to have fun because it's what we've been preparing for our whole lives and I inst he instantly knew what I was doing. I was handing it up to him to build a quick, hasty shelter so that we could sit out in a snowstorm around the fire. And he had some beer, and we were having a couple beers. So we built a wall with the pallet frames, and I had wire ties right there. We wire tied them together, and, and there was some PVC sitting there, and we threw a couple loops of PVC, three loops of PVC over it, and a tarp. And we had a nice little... You know, place to sit and talk. Dwayne dearly loves having a campfire. I've mentioned him several times in videos saying I was going to have a campfire every night until he comes back. Well, I gave up on that about a year ago. But uh, I was expecting things to happen before they happen. <clears throat> so, anyway, that's, that's one thought. I think I'll stop that one there. But point being is, uh, and I've wondered off and on over the years, you know, when things fall apart and judgment really hits in earnest, you know, am I going to go catatonic and just, like, drop dead from the shock? And then the other option would be I'm going to be having the time of my life because I've been, pre been preparing for this point in time for so long. So what Dwayne was saying is it's going to be the latter. So... Hopefully that'll be the case. But I told my family, I said, you know, when, just from the shock of putting myself out, exerting myself for so long, so many, to such an extreme, when things fall apart, you know, just if I go catatonic or, you know, go in a coma, you know, just let me rest for a couple of weeks and I'll wake up and come back to it. <coughs> but uh, now I'm out from under that stress because of the divorce, which I'll, <coughs> you know, actually have. Uh, Oh, the, the the other day, um, I was I was over visiting, and um, I was kind of grousing. You know, I was sitting there talking to my wife, and uh, 
I said, man, you know, I, when I started into this, I said I could build a rocket stove. I just didn't know I'd be doing it all by myself. And she goes, well, you've always wanted to build a rocket stove. And I said, yeah, I have, you know. So um, doing it by myself has been an awesome experience, making use of multiple things. I heard, thought of another one the other day, you know, including the karate thing. Oh, staying stay up all night. I mean, that's been my life work. Most of my life has been uh, night shift. You know, it's when the night shift's when people are real serious, you know. Guys that are working on night shift, they're there to work. They're not there to punch the clock and waste time. They're always more productive. A small night crew will always outproduce of two or three times the size of a day crew in any situation I've been in. But anyway, so, uh, and, and I didn't say, I said, you know, thank you for the opportunity for building the rocket stove for being the in the position where I am right now. Uh, but anyway, it's, uh, you know, the Lord, God moves in mysterious ways. His wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps on the sea and rides upon the storm. Deep in unfathomable minds of never failing skill, he treasures up his bright designs and works his sovereign will. Ye fearful saints, fresh courage take the clouds ye so much dread are big with mercy and will break in blessings on your head. Judge not the Lord by feeble sense, but trust him for his grace. Behind a frowning providence he hides a smiling face. Blind unbelief is sure to err and scan his work in vain. God is his own interpreter, and he will make it plain. And yes, that's from memory. God deeply judge his blind unbelief. That's the first word of each verse, and if you memorize the verse, and you have the starter word. So for the first three, I didn't even hesitate, but then I had to stop and go, God, deeply judge his blind unbelief is sure to err and scan his work in vain. So, God, deeply judge his blind unbelief. So, but, he, you know, the father's using everything. He used all the evil in Joseph's life to prepare Joseph for a time and a place of authority to save not just many other people, but his entire family, the entire nation of Israel. Had Joseph not been in Egypt, Jacob would have died. And he would have died childless except for Joseph. Joseph would have been the only survivor. But as it was, the other 12 tribes still existed, and that's God's plan. And he has put people who he deems to be worthy of authority in positions of stress and turmoil. I had an email the other day from Lindy. And um, saying that, you know, God, if God has a plan or a purpose for someone, he tests them. He puts them to the test, so he puts them through the fire. <laughs> he lets them get burned up. When the ashes of your life are, there's an old song by Dallas Holm, Ashes or something, I uh, can't remember it. Awesome song, I used to listen to it all the time. Anyway, when you have a crumbled foundation and whatever, you're, you're kind of burned up there, you you start over and you rebuild, you know. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. What fun. Uh, a lot of work and a lot of material to rebuild that, though. But it's going to be, uh, I'm going to air crete around everything, and that'll be the cheapest way to do it. It's a lot of air, <laughs> and it's insulative. So, once again, you know, that, that will really come to the rescue. They said you can make a furnace out of it. Well, because of the Portland, that's not really true. Because Portland will incinerate, it'll burn up. And then, like in this case, it left pretty much would leave just the perlite. And perlite allows air through. So probably a lot of the Portland got sucked up to chimney through the... Because there are cracks in this. Um, you know, I mean, not cracks, but there, there's, there are seams. This fire brick, you, they, you think it's completely, you know... You can... See see a little bit of light through that this thing is still hot i don't want to put my hand in there too long anyway all right that's about it just having to get a couple of thoughts down there as long as i'm in a uh, contemplative and <laughs> emotive and uh didactical mood might as well give you a few other pointers so yep jerry we're gonna have so much fun I'm going to have to retitle all these and put funny titles on them instead of just Greenhouse, Greenhouse, Greenhouse. You know, Groundhog Day, number 2,500. <laughs> uh, oh, one more story. Yeah, David Ray. 
was helping me move stuff out of the house right after the uh, shock, just uh, just, uh, a, just absolute, you know, unexpected. Uh, my wife wanted to file for divorce, and I haven't contested it. I just let her do her thing, and, you know, it's still my wife. I mean, the woman doesn't have the whatever. Uh, she was advised by godly people. But anyway, my point is that as we were moving out, you know, I'm, I'm going... Over and over again, just humming that, you know, Luke's theme from Star Wars. And I'll never forget the uh, the scene there where he's got his hands on his knees and there's two sons and just, uh, you know, going up against a complete and absolute, utter impossibility of a monstrous uh, opposing force and Luke. You're going to have to learn the ways of the Force if you come to Alderaan with me and fight the Empire. I'm not going to Alderaan with you. You know, I have to stay here and harvest crops. So do you stay on the farm or do you go out and fight the Empire? Well, I've been determined that I was going to fight the Empire. And that, that line just, you know, that, that those words just in the, the, just the scene, you know, always just, I, I'll cry every time I see it. But, um, you know, that that's the uh, kind of where I was humming that as we were moving stuff out. And I, I'd see something and go like, oh, man, this is awesome, you know. Stuff I've accumulated. And I'd go... Oh man, we're gonna have so much fun, you know, quoting Dwayne <laughs> and David Ray is like, you know, I don't know whether to help you or just punch you out, just deck you. And I said, What do you mean? He goes, You just you 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 know, you're getting divorced and you're saying we're gonna have so much fun, you know, and um and it's been it's been an absolute um it was a shock. It was a you know, my I mean, I came closer to dying in within the last the six months following my divorce and the first sixty years of my life from people who actually unknowingly but were used to try to kill me um i'll leave one or two names unnamed but people who were integral in the whole saga right here at the cabin people who i a person who i formerly considered a brother you know is shown his true colors you know a drunkard um, drunkard shall not enter the kingdom of heaven and he's just getting more and more uh, out of control and i man i don't i, I don't want to have anything to do with alcohol it's just a, I've seen it trashed, completely destroy a man's life. Well, over and over again, along with other things. Vices will destroy a man's life, so don't have them. <laughs> but anyway, all right, that's enough. But uh, we're going to have so much fun. Yeah. All right. Yahweh bless everyone. Bye.